I'd like to call the uh, uh, July, June 27th meeting of the Falmouth Zoning Board of Appeals to order. Um, there is, a, I don't know if the applicant is here, but there's an executive session on the agenda here. Uh, Begley versus, et al. versus uh, Falmouth, uh, 284 Old Meeting House Road in East Falmouth. Is anyone here for that? If not, I guess we will pass on the executive session. Uh, and uh, so let me begin by asking everyone uh, to please silence your cell phones. Um, as I'm sure many of you know, the Zoning Board of Appeals is uh, uh, hears uh, requests for special permits, variances, and appeals uh, decisions of, for example, the Building Commissioner. We do this through a public hearing process. Uh, if you please silence your cell phones. Did I say that already? <laughs> um, and also, of course, we'd like you uh, during the hearing process to refrain from private uh, conversations on the side. Uh, usually the way the hearing process works is we will ask the clerk to read any Referrals from town departments, uh, read an announcement uh, of the uh, hearing, and then um, the board, uh, the, the applicant's uh, representative will come and present to the board. Uh, after the applicant's uh, pr presentation has been made, the board may ask for questions, may ask questions of the applicant, and then we'll open it up for public comment. If you wish to comment, um, wait to be recognized by the chair, be sure to go to the podium, uh, speak through the mic so that you're picked up through Falmouth TV and become a TV star. Uh, and uh, when the board feels they have enough information, uh, we'll close the hearing and uh, either take it under advisement or uh, have a vote. We, if we don't feel we have enough information in the course of the evening to make a decision, or to consider decision, we'd like more testimony, then we can continue to a date certain in the future. Uh, special permits require a <coughs> four to one uh, vote, super majority. Uh, if a special permit is denied, you cannot return uh, for, I think it's two years, <coughs> unless the project is substantially different. Um, something to bear in mind uh, as the hearing proceeds, because you can always withdraw without prejudice. Um, I think those are the basic announcements. Um, and so we can move on to the first item on the agenda tonight. We have one, two continuations and uh, three new hearings. Um, first item on the agenda, 024-19, reminds the trustees, 8 Worcester uh, Avenue, I understand the applicant would like to withdraw. So we, we've received a letter from the applicant, and it was to the zoning administrator regarding application number 24-19, 8 Worcester Court. Dear Ms. Stockman, the applicants John S. Remiza and Christina A. Remiza, trustees of the John S. Remiza Revocable Trust of 2014 and the Christina A. Remiza Revocable Trust of 2014, hereby request to withdraw the application for a special permit without prejudice, and they're asking that the board allow this request and uh, Mr. Clower is here in person if there's any questions. I have nothing to add unless there's any questions. Okay. Um, no, I don't think we need to vote on a withdrawal, do we? Except we just accept, accept your withdrawal. Yep. If they're just requesting to withdraw. It's still open until, until the vote is taken. That's the point of order. And therefore, uh, we have a statement to Hmm. Okay. Attorney Clower. Thank you. 
My name is Manny D'Ambrosio. I'm the brother of Elaine D'Ambrosio. She resides at 5 Montgomery Ave, and I'm going to read it as if I were her. My name is Elaine D'Ambrosio. I am the owner of the property located at 5 Montgomery Ave, which abuts the applicant's parcel at 8 Worcester Ave. I personally went to the Bonstable County Records of Deeds and requested to see the plot plans filed at both 8 Worcester Ave and 5 Montgomery Ave. The only plot plan of record is the one the ZBA recorded as having received on June 3rd, 2019, that being the plot plan at 5 Montgomery Ave, which shows from the boundary to my garage foundation to be 3.5 feet, resulting in the distance from the boundary to the existing cottage of the applicant to be under seven inches. Further, I have before me a letter from the Falmouth Planning Board stating that they endorse the plot plan at 5 Montgomery Ave, resulting in the distance from the boundary to the existing cottage of the applicant to be under seven inches. Additionally, neither the owner of 8 Worcester Ave or his representative had no issue with my appeal number 83-03 at the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting on June 4th, 2003, which the plot plan showed from the boundary to my garage foundation to be 3.5 feet. And further, the Zoning Board of Appeals unanimously voted on June 13th, 2003, approved my special permit, which included the plot plan which showed from the boundary to my garage foundation to be 3.5 feet. Therefore, the only plot plan to be considered for boundary location between my garage and the existing cottage by the ZBA should be that at 5 Montgomery Ave, showing 3.5 feet from my garage to the boundary, thus resulting in the distance from the boundary to the existing cottage at 8 Worcester Ave to be under seven inches. Thank you for your time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Bad addition to the record, I guess. Uh, uh, without being interested in a uh, contest of wills, for lack of a better term, we're going to remain with our uh, motion to, uh, our request rather, for a uh, withdrawal without prejudice, please. So is there a motion to that effect? So I'll make a motion to accept the withdrawal without prejudice. Application 24-19, reminds the trustees, 8 Worcester Avenue, Falmouth, Mass. I'll second it. Okay. So that's Bob and Ed. <coughs> Any further discussion on that motion? If not, uh, let's see. It's a continuation. I'm pretty sure I was on that. Well, to withdraw, it might have procedural matter. Yeah. All right. Do we have enough to vote? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. We accept the withdrawal. Thank you. And um, uh, before we start the next uh, application, I just put in my memory stick, which I just updated, but it's got the old plans on it. So I'd like to run back to my office to update those plans if you'd be willing to take this out of order. Okay. Because I don't we have the plans in question for the next so application. So that's Shay? Yes. Um, all right. Uh, then we could move on to... Susie? The new hearings, Susie. And uh, so first, let's have a I, I motion I'll to take Susie out of order, if we could. So I'll make a motion to take uh, application 27-19, Susie, out of order. Second it. Okay, <coughs> all in favor? Aye. Just you, Ed. Thanks so much. Aye. Aye. <laughs> Aye. Aye. There we go. Okay, so let's see. Actually, so we are missing, I need to designate a yeah. alternate. Um, so why don't, we, why don't we start with Mary? And we'll go back and forth. So application number 
Being all persons deemed affected by the Board of Appeals under Section 11 of Chapter 40A of the Mass General Laws, you are hereby notified that Barbara and Joseph Susi of Norwood, Mass., have applied to the Zoning Board of Appeals for a special permit pursuant to Sections 240-69E of the Code of Falmouth to construct a single-family dwelling exceeding 20% lot coverage by structures on subject property known as Zero Wild, Wild Harbor Road, North Falmouth, Mass. More referrals. CONCOM, flood zone is AE15. New house construction requires filing with CONCOM. Engineering, uh, general water runoff comments can't go on to uh, public roadways or rights of ways or butters. And any connections or alterations to public utilities would require permission from the appropriate town departments. <coughs> Health department, plan of the septic system is adequate for a four bedroom home being proposed. Water, the applicant must apply for a new water service. Planning board, no comment. Assessors, no comment. Fire department, no comment. And there are nine letters of support in the file for the application. Okay. For the applicant. Yep, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. I'm Laura Moynihan, a Falmouth attorney representing uh, Barbara and Joseph Susi, who are here uh, in the audience tonight, and they own this lot um, on Wild Harbor Road. Um, they have um, owned property in the neighborhood for um, many years, 50 some odd years, um, and uh, this vacant lot is shown here in yellow, and uh, the um, they would like to build a new house here, the house that they have now they're sharing with Mr. Susie's sister and family and uh, they have four children and grandchildren and his sister has children and grandchildren so that house is getting very crowded. Um, so this is the site plan of the house. You have this in your file. <coughs> uh, the uh, lot coverage in the district by structures is 20%. So this is an application under 240-69E for um, lot coverage up to 25% by structure. The lot is about 10,000 square feet. And here you have uh, some elevation plans of the home. Um, it is in a flood zone. The Conservation Commission has approved through administrative review the plans, which is required because of the flood zone. There aren't any wetlands, uh, you know, in, within the jurisdiction, but because it's a flood zone, there's an administrative review approval in your file. So you'll see that the first floor elevation has to be brought up uh, slightly, and that a lot. Uh, gives uh, reason for the, uh, the height here of the dwelling, but right here where the uh, cursor is is the first floor elevation because of the flood zone. Um, you'll see the wraparound porch in the front, which is, um, I think, important to the application, and I'll get to that. These are the rear and left side elevations, and you have the floor plans in the file showing the garage, the first floor plan, and the second floor plan. They are looking at four bedrooms. You have a lot coverage plan in the file showing the various breakdowns of lot coverage. And I did file um, a lot coverage analysis with you, just comparing um, properties um, in the neighborhood uh, on Wild Harbor Road and Cove uh, Road, which is um, behind the lot. This house here that you see in the back of the vacant lot, this is the vacant lot here, is on Cove Road, a couple on Grove Street around the corner. Um, so these are some of the neighboring homes, just to give you an idea of the scale of the dwellings in the area. This is 354 Wild Harbor, uh, 342, you know, the vegetation is quite thick, so it's a little hard to see some of these, but I did my best. <laughs> um, Another one at 14 Cove Road, 
19 Cove Road, 20 Cove Road, 25 Cove Road. This is a uh, one story, which is actually over the 20% lot coverage on 15 Ocean View Ave, right around the corner. But I put that in there because it is over the 20% lot coverage, as uh, most of these are. Nine Ocean View Ave, Grove Street around the corner, and another on Grove Street, and then 5755 Grove Street. So you can see that the scale of the home that the Susies are proposing is very similar to what's there for the most part. Um, it is zoned residential C. As I mentioned, the lot size is just over 10,000 square feet, and it is in a developed neighborhood. Project details, four bedrooms in the home, um, a garage, a porch in the front. There will be no basement because of the flood zone. Building height is 32 feet 6 inches from the existing average grade. <coughs> The first, from the first floor elevation, it's t about 27 and a half feet. And then the proposed lot coverage is 24.6% by structures, about 2,500 square feet, 34% by structures, pavement, and parking. So under 24069E, lot coverage by structures over 20%, up to 25% by special permit. So here the 20% lot coverage equals 2,031.21 square feet by right. So the proposed lot coverage is 2,496 square feet, so we have a difference of about 465 square feet only. If you look at the porch, the exterior stairs, and the chimney, those total 381 that make up a good portion of that 20%. So when Mr. Susie first came to see me, I said, well, do you really need the porch? <laughs> and he said, my wife really wants a front porch. And I think she's right because it's just a beautiful location down Wild Harbor Road. There's lots of people walking by and the front porch um, is very important to them and, and the way they want to enjoy the home. And the two-car garage is important. Mr. Susie has an old 64 Corvette that he keeps in the garage. So, um, you know, the difference in lot coverage I think here is relatively slight but it's um, important to the home. Um, I tried to um, figure out ways to bring it down to 20%, but they were really wanted to, to have these amenities. So under the zoning bylaw, I would submit the size and height of the structures in keeping with the neighborhood. There wouldn't be any adverse impacts, um, particularly given what you see from the photos. No adverse traffic impacts. You are permitted to go up to 25%. And the lot coverage analysis indicates that the neighboring there are neighboring properties with lot coverage over 20% by structures. So that is our presentation. Be happy to answer any questions if you have any. All right. Why don't we start with Mary at that end? Yeah. Um, I had a question about the analysis and how these particular properties were were selected. Okay. Well, when I uh, do the lot coverage analysis, I start with the GIS map, um, which is here. And um, I look at the most, the, the, the neighboring properties. From the GIS map, I can pretty much eyeball which structures are at 20% or over 20%. And then from there, I go to, we go to the assessor's records. And each property um, on the town assessor's records has a building and square footage sketch where you can calculate the footprint of the dwelling. And from that, we take, I take the size of the lot and I calculate the lot coverage. So we look at, obviously, the, the houses that are the closest to the subject property because that, and I think here, you know, the ones that I selected were along Cove Road, some on Grove Street. I didn't go up into this area here, but I think there, I think I had probably 15 or 16 properties that um, were selected to give you an idea that we're not dealing with a neighborhood that has, you know, nine, ten percent lot coverage. It's twenty. It's close to twenty percent or higher for the most part. I, w I was just curious. For example, twenty-five and fifteen. Twenty-five. Um, so some of them, uh, some of them in the lot coverage analysis are not at are not over twenty percent. Um, 
actually 25 I didn't in put in the lot coverage analysis because I was looking at the records but then when I went out I included in the, in the photographs just because of the scale <coughs> of the um, of the house and the similar um, look you know with the gabled roofs and the two stories so under the bylaw you know we're looking at the scale and proportion of the home in comparison to others in the neighborhood so that's why I put that picture in the presentation mm -hmm. um, but I didn't but I didn't include it in the lot coverage analysis probably because it's under 20% does that answer your question I have no questions <coughs> I have no questions <coughs> hey, Jared? No, I have no questions. Uh, nine letters in support. Do we have any objections from abutters? No, just the support letters. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't have any questions on this either. Uh, let's see if there's anything from the public. Any public comment on uh, this project? No public comment. Does the board feel they have enough information? Thanks, Jerry. Second it. Jerry and Ed, to close. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, would we like to make a motion? Motion to approve. Second it. Okay. Bob and Jerry to approve. Any further discussion? Hearing, hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Jerry, Aye. all in favor? <coughs> Okay. So we have findings and findings findings positions. positions? Uh, yes, we'd like that. <laughs> <laughs> you made the sure, motion. Sure. Yeah, Thank you. Know. It's been a long day for me. I got to okay. tell you guys, a long day. If I'm not at my peak game here. So the house will be a four bedroom house with a garage. It has a four bedroom septic system. Um, lot coverage calculations were submitted. One third of the lots submitted were over 24%. Meets, yeah, meets 240-216, increases utilization. Teachers. And there were letters of support submitted to the file, no objections or concerns. 216 or 269-8? I know one process. Well, 240-216, it also meets what they're applying under, which is 240-69-E. Thank you, Henry. For uh, <coughs> conditions, per plans, um, comply with the engineering comments for stormwater runoff and water department for water service. Should we note even in the per plan that there's no storage sheds and things like that? If there's none on the plan, I don't think yeah, you it's per the plan. Oh, okay, per plan. Just okay. do it Does that do it for findings and conditions? Yeah, that does it. Let's retake that vote. <laughs> With those findings and conditions, yeah. all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Now the approval is legit. Uh, is Attorney Flower back? I am. Okay. <coughs> so we should go back to continuations. Uh, this is. 025-19 Shea, 0 Nathan Ellis Highway, North Falmouth. Variance to construct dwelling attached with a detached garage within 75 feet of front yard setback from Route 151. Good evening, yeah, Mr. Yeah, go ahead. Good evening, Mr. Foreman, members of the board. For the record, my name is Kevin Clower. I'm an attorney with Ahmed Clower Law Firm here in Falmouth, and I represent the applicant, Michael Shea, uh, the prospective buyer of Zero Nathan Ellis Highway. Um, I did submit some uh, correspondence earlier this week 
but given the, the lateness of the application, I wanted to run through, uh, not the application, the submission rather, I wanted to run through that information with you. So I think it's pretty relevant to what we're uh, discussing. And I'll, I'm gonna start with a brief recap of what we discussed two weeks ago and then go into the new information. The applicant is requesting a variance under section 240-203 of the zoning bylaw in order to deviate from the minimum front yard setback to Nathan Ellis Highway being Route 151. The min minimum setback in that area is 75 feet. This lot is bisected by a 66 foot wide easement to Commonwealth Electric. There is a sizable utility pole located within that easement, and this easement affects the lots to the east and west of this, uh, of this premises. The lot to uh, the west built a dwelling uh, pursuant to a variance that was issued by this board in 2000, allowing for a setback of 65 feet rather than 75 feet. And the lot to the east was able to build to the north of the easement area. This lot is the most affected due to the nature, of, uh, the direct nature and direction of the easement. Uh, the owner purchased this property in 1981, at which time the minimum setback was 35 feet. That setback was changed to 75 feet in 1986, and the result of that change uh, at town meeting is essentially that the lot is unbuildable without the benefit of a variance. So what we're proposing is a setback of 43 feet in order to allow a modest house and garage. As we discussed last time, there was a similar variance of 42 feet from the front yard issued in 2009. There was a question raised, I think it was by Ms. Barry, as to why there was no action taken at that time. And I didn't have that answer then. Uh, but in speaking with the, um, the, seller's, uh, the, the owner's attorney, I've been informed that uh, shortly after the grant of the variance, one of the owners passed away. One point of order here. So I think the original group on this included TJ, right? Yes. So probably should include James now okay. uh, for voting purposes. Thank right? you. You were present at this I was. hearing. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I meant to ask that. Um, shortly after the grant of the variance in 2009, one of the owners passed away, and the survivor didn't want to undertake the construction of a new home on their own. Section 24203 states that this board may grant variances due to soil conditions, shape, and topography of a, uh, of a lot or structures, especially affecting the land, but not generally affecting the zoning district in which it's in. Uh, especially in circumstances where a literal enforcement of the bylaw would result in a substantial hardship. Uh, in this particular instance, the easement affects the lot in such a way that it provides a unique shape and topography. It's a circumstance where a literal enforcement would cause a substantial hardship because the lot becomes unbuildable. As I noted, um, there were two variances issued, uh, one for the lot to the west and one for this lot. Uh, in which case is the, this board found that the easement provided the basis for a grant of a variance to the setback regulations. So in 2000, uh, the owner of the property known as 28 North uh, Nathan Ellis Highway, which is now, no, now owned by uh, Antronik Manazian, um, was granted a variance. And I included a block quote in that correspondence, but I think the really pertinent part was uh, the board found that the applicant has demonstrated a unique shape lot due to the calm electric easement that runs across the property. The board finds the applicant has demonstrated the necessary criteria for the granting of a variance. In 2009, uh, as I mentioned, a variance was granted for this particular lot, and it includes a discussion of the effect of the easement on the lot. And the board stated that this is a shape issue due to the electrical easement going through the property, as well as a change in the zoning setback that was approved by the town five years after the applicant purchased the property. The shape of the subject property is entirely constrained due to the easement. The findings also included that the easement contains a pole on a property, which is relevant because the definition of uh, variance states that due to unique uh, shape, topography, or soil conditions affecting the lot or structures, and a pole does meet the definition of structure within the bylaw. Um, and then the board went on to say that the easement does create a hardship in consideration of the front yard setback. So in both of those cases, as well as the case at present, a relief can be granted by this board without substantial detriment to the public good. I think it's also important to consider Massachusetts General Law Chapter 40A, Section 6, which states that a lot cannot be rendered unbuildable due to subsequent zoning changes. So at the time of the purchase, the setback was 35 feet, which provides more than enough space for the construction of a small single family dwelling. In 1986, that zoning was changed and increased that setback to 75 feet. This board can, really, can provide relief by the granting of a variance in accordance with that law. 
So this board has found more than once that the effects of the easement on a lot constitute a unique shape and issue uh, that allow for the grant of a variance to provide relief in a way that's not substantially detrimental to the public good. My hope is that this board will find the same way again. I believe that I provided uh, enough information to satisfy some of the questions that were raised last time. I'd be happy to address any other questions that might come up um, at this time. Okay. Let's see if there's any questions. James, do you want to start? The 2009 variance was a 42 foot setback. And yes. What is the proposed setback? At this we're requesting 43 foot, so it's an, it's an additional foot. Okay. Where's the pole on this one? If you look, um, it's right where the cursor is right here. There's a dot and it says pole. Oh, it says pole. Okay. Yeah. That's the one. No other questions. Okay. Add a question. So, uh, I, so on the pole, the pole is actually in the easement, not outside. It's within the easement. easement. It's 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 the pole for the power lines. Mm -hmm. right. <coughs> okay. Mary, any questions on this? No. Um, I guess I have one question, which is, do you know what uh, any sense of what town meeting was contemplating when they increased the, ease, the setback requirement? I don't. Um, I, I, it was it was 1986, and I won't mention my age at that point. Uh, but it was it was, it was no, I wasn't there. Let's put it that way. Um, but you haven't reviewed uh, town meeting. I, I have not reviewed the town meeting minutes. Um, but I do think that there's more than a, uh, more than ample space, considering the the road layout, the uh, size of the lot, the uh, sizable 43 foot setback which is uh, still going to be there, so that if there were any safety concerns, I think those concerns were alleviated um, by, the, by the amount of space that is present today, or will be present. Okay. Uh, well, if there's no further questions from the board, let me go to the public. Any public comment on this uh, proposal? If I can make one request, yeah. um, if the board would be willing to have a discussion prior to sure. closing, that'd, that would be appreciated. Appropriate. Um, so, anybody want to comment on this? Well, my, I, I think my issue, I, I, I get a little cautious when we do variances, and I understand that the easement is the biggest effect on the lot. But we have to look at shape of the lot, and even though there's an easement over the lot, I understand it affects usable space, but in my opinion, it doesn't affect the shape of the lot, doesn't affect soil conditions and the structure that's there that even is the pole. I would make an argument for that if it was outside the easement, but the pole sits in the middle of the easement. And as much as I feel for the applicant, I don't think it's a unique situation for that area that common electric easement runs all through town. So I would be leaning towards not granting a variance on the basis of what we're allowed to look at for variances. I know there is a, I guess there's an argument to made on that 40A section six, but I don't think that that section alone would give enough support for the variance. Okay, anybody else <coughs> have a view on this? I, I think, well, uh, I think they've proven that the variance should be allowed based on the previous conditions. I can appreciate the intent of town meeting, but we've discussed this before. The intent of town meeting does not trump the actual wording in the bylaw. We would be here forever to try to interpret what the intent was, even if we had the minutes. I think this is pretty reasonable. I think it's consistent with past practice, and uh, he, he mentioned state law as well as other reasons why this could be, lack of a better word, constructive interpretation. And I don't think this would be precedent setting because I think as all of these are, we look at it case by case. Now just because we approved it here doesn't mean we have to approve it in the future. But there was an approval here in the past that has some validity. Well, I mean, you bring up the town meeting bylaw, uh, town meeting, the literal interpretation is the setback should be 75 feet. You, you know, are you so saying are you saying you think that it should be 75 feet without? I, no, no, I'm just someone had meant you might have been mentioned. What was the intent? Yeah, I, was, I, I, I. That's what my question was. What was the intent of increasing the setback? I guess my question is, the intent doesn't matter. It's 75 feet. 
<coughs> and that's the bylaw. They're looking for a variance from the bylaw. So, <coughs> so just a question, Jerry. Which so which section of the actual bylaw would you use to support the variance? I would use the argument presented in Mr. Fowler's letter plus the general law. But out Which of the to do. so when we so when we have to choose between what they give us to choose from, I would I would cite everything in accordance with Mr. Fowler's letter as uh, as the attorney of record having no opposing counsel. I don't think we got anything from Frank on this. So just to un no, I just want to understand. So you would be basing your decision on the easement. I'm basing my decision on the letter submitted on June 26th by Attorney Clower. So in that letter, what is he using for the basis of support? The narrative that's in there. No, I'm, no, not, I'm not gonna pass out one word in this sentence in its totalitarian, in, well, in it's, its entirety, I say that meets the entire subsection. So if it's in support, and, it, and I'm not arguing with it support or not, I'm just looking for a basis from the letter that goes directly with the bylaw. So the letter talks about the poll. The letter talks about the easement. So I'm just trying to see what you're basing it on so I can understand to see if that's something that I would base it on. Base conditions, and we're repeating ourselves. So I'm basing it on the conditions stated by Mr. Uh, Attorney Clower that the 240-203, special circumstances, the easement, uh, some of the past situations here. Uh, we've had other cases where we said a flooding is not necessarily changed in the shape of the lot, but in fact, it impacts how a lot could be used. And we granted a variance because of that, because the board determined that the flooding of the parcel based on new FEMA regs was in, in effect a change in the size and shape of, of the lot. I'm not sure what town meeting meant by that, but. I still think he met the burden of proof by proving, by submitting to us what's needed. And uh, I, I'd hate to go to court on this on a, to, uh, in fact, someone might be suing us on this, so I don't know. Well, so that's <laughs> a, <laughs> James, do you have a view? Uh, I'm very agree with Jerry. I'm inclined to grant the variance, uh, given that there was previously a variance granted, because the argument that's, and the findings of the board are pretty well documented in it as to why. Um, my concern too is that based on the change in zoning that if we don't this essentially it's now a completely unbuildable lot and that wouldn't, at that point I think someone would most likely be forced to sue us if need be. There's been some change in Supreme Court uh, holdings about how that can happen to you which is a little concerning but that's not relevant at this point. Ed, <coughs> where are you, I'm what inclined, direction are you going? I'm inclined to give them the variance based on the fact that it was a buildable lot up until the point in time, which the town meeting said, no, make it 75 feet. But, you know, if it fits the, and what they have proposed fits the lot. And I think it's reasonable in the area. Mm -hmm. I, I don't see the need for it to be 75 feet back. I have some of the same heartburn as Bob in that uh, this is a, uh, not really, it's a square lot. There's nothing odd about the shape of this lot. The only thing creating the issue is the easement. So I guess my question to you is, is there any case law There's, there's really showing a variance granted because of an easement making a portion of the lot unusable? Uh, there was one case granted in Waltham in 1960, but it really wasn't on point for what we were looking at. It was more involved. It didn't have to do with setbacks. It didn't have to do with um, the easements weren't necessarily relevant to the, the, the variance was actually for a change in use. So it, it didn't strike me as incredibly on point. Uh, that was the only case I was really able to find um, for or against. There, there, there hasn't been many. Um, but to, to Mr. Dugan's point, I think it's important that, you know, this board itself found that as, as substantial grounds, that the shape of the lot is entirely constrained by the existence of the easement. So, which is true, there's, there's only so much well, usable. The usable portion of the lot. But that's, but this is a unique circumstance. But it doesn't affect the shape, the shape is the shape. Well, it does though, it, it does, because you can, if you can't use it, it's, it's irrelevant for the purpose of. Could, could we please refrain from conversations out there? Yeah. 
you know, it, it's essentially irrelevant for the purpose of the way you contemplate the lot. So when we look at the usable space of the lot, you have this 66 foot wide strip that runs through the middle. That does constrain and affect the shape of the lot. Now I understand that you're saying the, the lot on paper, if you took away the easement, is a square. That's absolutely true. However, with the, with the easement, which does exist and is going to continue to exist, the only way this lot becomes a buildable lot, as it was at the time it was purchased, is with the grant of a variance that doesn't deviate substantially from the from uh, the, the overall zoning district. It's a residential zoning district. We're trying to put a residence here. Um, it, it doesn't substantially harm any of the, uh, the, the area or, or the zoning district as a whole. And relief can be granted uh, in a way that, that's favorable to the, uh, to the applicant here without any detriment. The, the shape, I understand your, your heartburn, Mr. Foreman, but the I'm listening. Given, given the easement, um, I think that it, it's not fair to say that the shape is a square because the, sh the area that they can use, the shape that they can use is not a square. think of topography about ground things but if you actually look at the lot and it's referenced in the previous easement to, there's high tech well not high tech there's wires running overhead yeah like that's kind of how I'm getting my hand around addressing the topographical uh, argument I think it's it's a stretch I think the strongest issue really the strongest argument is the unbuildability aspect of it mm -hmm. All right, you've, you've heard discussion from well, the board. Uh, yeah, but I, I, got, I got one that I don't know where it's going. Uh, I got three I know, I got four, <laughs> I, got, I, got, I, got, I got four I know, I got one I don't. And, uh, and that presents me with a bit of a quandary here. I, I, I wonder, so I think, I mean, speaking as the probably that one, right? Um, <laughs> I'd love to, I, I'd like to find a way to grant this. I sympathetic to you, the application. You motioned for the approval in 2009. Did I? Yes. <laughs> Good for me. <laughs> so you see, I'm moving in that direction. <laughs> uh, what was my uh, reason? <laughs> the constraint of the shape of the lot by the easement. <laughs> well, you've, put, you've made a pretty strong argument, I guess. <laughs> I guess the question is, will they can continue it if they would want. have been nice if you'd mentioned that. Well, I'm saving that one. <laughs> <laughs> what are you changing your mind? No, I, no, I'm, oh. I'm, Should we I'm in a quandary. I probably was then too. I, I do think, uh, re reading, reading through some case law, I did find uh, uh, information that said uh, dimensional variances are held to a lower threshold than other variances. Okay. And it's, uh, even a relatively minor hardship can justify a variance. Uh, and a lesser showing of hardship is appropriate for a dimensional variance, as long as it doesn't change the character of the zoning district or endanger properties with uh, nearby properties with inconsistent land uses, which I think is completely accurate for this for this property here. I do remember this coming before us. I just, but I'm amazed that I made that motion. Would you be um, happy with <laughs> Frank weighed in? Well, that's what I'm wondering, is if I we mean, should. I had asked for that last yeah, time. I thought we did too yeah. myself. So yeah. I would just like to know if we can use an easement as to relate to shape of lot. If we can, that's, that's my, my issue is the easement. Mm -hmm. But it has the pole on it, not just like. But and if the pole was outside of the easement, I could understand. But the, you can't use the easement area in total. So if there were 10 poles in the easement, it wouldn't make a difference. Or if there was no poles in the easement. It I, think, I, think the, I think the pole was mentioned because in, in the definition, uh, in the granting of a variance, it references um, conditions presented by uh, soil condition shape topography uh, affecting the, the lot or structures. And it's that or structures that is the reason the poll was brought into the question in the 2009 decision. That's part of what the board hung their hat on as giving them the grounds for the variance. And I think it's important to note that when that, when that variance was appealed, it wasn't appealed on the gr basis of the granting of the variance. It was appealed based on an alleged, um, uh, alleged hardship of property devaluation, which was found to have no, no merit. The grounds for the, the appeal, uh, the grounds for the variance were not challenged at all. So, the board in 2009 looked at the easement in conjunction with the pole, affecting the shape and 
topography and uh, of, of, the, of the lot and or structure and or structure uh, to, to grant the variance. Uh, not, uh, can I put the answer to my email? There's no such thing as grandfathering. This was approved. Well, the laws were changed. This sort of I think I think the grant I think the way it's grandfathered is by the grant of a, a variance to provide relief. And then once the variance expires, you have to reapply. So yeah. Right. yeah, that's well, yeah, I, I personally I, well, so I, I would like to it seems be in like where we of are is is, is I'd we'd like to get some input from uh, town council if that's where are we in terms of time on this? We're, we're under a pending purchase and sale agreement, but uh, that's our well, problem, not yours. Could, I think we could get something back pretty quickly from town council. It's not a. And I think in the past you've worked with town council. Sure. Too. I mean, I think there's good. Legal so would someone like to yeah. then? He has to vote to continue. I mean, if <laughs> oh, we it beats my alternative, I think. So uh, yeah, we, we need to vote to continue. Okay. I, yeah. I think we're not up against the deadline. I'm not, I'm not sure where we are. What, what's the next date available? We can't change the purchase and sale agreement. No, we, July 11th. I can. Well, not unilaterally. July 11th. I'm here that night anyways. So then I make July 11th is the deadline or July 11th no, is no, the next hearing date? Next, next hearing date. Next date. Yeah. Make so that be acceptable? So uh, that my my, only, concern, my only concern there is getting a response from town council given to holiday next week. Uh, which well, plus he goes on, when does he go on vacation? Let him figure out how he's going to get a response. You know, if he can't make it, we right, well, hold, hold on. <laughs> we're, we're, I think we're getting consultation okay. over there. Okay. Uh, we may have an issue where town council is going to be out for a week. Yeah. Is that so next week or the week after? Next week. Oh, so, so shall we extend to the next the meeting? 18th, too? possibly. July 18th? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can we have a motion to continue to July 18th then? So I'll make a motion to continue to July 18th so that we can get input from town council. Second. I'll second. All right, Ed beat you to it. Uh, so that's Bob and Ed to continue to July 18th here in town hall, 630. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good. All right, so. All right. right. You've made some progress tonight. Should we take a Slowly one minute surely. recess? Sure. You want to take a recess? One minute. One minute recess. That's pretty quick recess. How yeah. about <laughs> how about five minute recess?
So the next item on the agenda then uh, is another new hearing. This is 028-19 Fitzgerald, 16 Mass Ave uh, in Falmouth. And Bob, do you have something to read to us? So application number 28-19. Being all persons deemed affected by the Board of Appeals under Section 11 of Chapter 40A of the Mass General Laws, you are hereby notified that Paul Fitzgerald of Westwood, Mass., has applied to the Zoning Board of Appeals for a special permit pursuant to Sections 240-3 of the Code of Falmouth to convert existing deck, expanding habitable space, and construct three-season room with roof deck on subject property known as 16 Massachusetts Avenue, Falmouth, Mass., For referrals, CONCOM, no comment. Engineering general comments re regarding uh, stormwater runoff. Health Department. This project would not meet Title V setback requirements if the proposed addition is a crawl, full, or slab foundation. Only feasible if deck tubes, sauna tubes, are tubes are used as there is no setback to septic system components. I would also be concerned about the weight of the three season room may place on the septic tank, which is in very close proximity. Water department, no comments. Assessors, no comments. Planning, no comments. Fire department, no comments. Uh, no letters in support, opposition, or concerns. Okay. For the applicant. Good evening. My name is Jeff Nickerson. I'm an attorney here in town. I represent Paul and Barbara Fitzgerald. Paul's traveling, so he's not here tonight, but Bob Bailey's here with us. Also here is Lisa Pacheco, an architect for the Fitzgeralds who has designed the proposed addition. Um, to give the board a little bit of familiarity, I figured I'd show some photos. This is the existing house. And essentially what the plan is would be to take uh, the front deck, you can see a couple of piers there, that would be converted to habitable space and a sun porch. So. Uh, we're not going up, really. We're just going to go out the south side of the house to add some more space. So this is the view towards uh, Pennsylvania Ave. The house is kind of tucked back here behind this vegetation. Uh, this is the view from down in the beach. Uh, th this is an inn. And this is a bed and breakfast with a vacant lot next to it. It's used for parking. Our locus is right here. Uh, this is a further view of the property as you're walking down uh, Mass Ave. And this is a view down south at uh, Mass Ave. This is a southerly view towards the sound. And this is our locus. So the Fitzgeralds are asking for relief under Falmouth Zoning Code 240-3 to alter a pre-existing non-conforming structure. And our site plan will identify uh, what's non-conforming. So this property has a lot of non-conformities, which can probably be uh, answered to by the fact that it was built in 1924 before we had a zoning code. It's 2.1 feet off Mass Ave here. It's shown as 6.6 .6 feet from the corner of the building to the side yard. Uh, it would probably be closer, actually, if it were dimensioned from this uh, deck and stairs. This used to be a bed and breakfast, and so my guess is that the deck and stairs were probably egress that were required at the time to have more people living in the house, but it's a single-family home now. Uh, and it's only 1.3 from the uh, neighbor's lot line here. Plenty of distance to the side yard lot line in the front, uh, and the proposed work area is shown on this plan right here. It's also a non-conforming structure uh, because there are three stories by definition. There was a uh, previous uh, zoning uh, determination that the third floor counted as a full story. Uh, lot coverage by structures is over 20% at 34.2%. If we're allowed to proceed under this proposal, that would decrease by three-tenths of a percent, so we're making it a little bit better. Uh, so again, what we'd like to do is convert the majority of the existing deck area south of the home into habitable dwelling space. A portion would be habitable year-round, other, the other portion would be a sun porch. I'll show you some architecturals that might depict more accurately what we're looking at here. Okay, 
So this is the first story of the home. You'll see that the existing deck kind of bows out a little bit here and wraps around the side. Essentially what we're asking to do is fill in most of this space with um, a, a four season space and then a sunroom off to the side. The way that we're losing square footage in terms of building coverage is we're losing some of these areas that are kind of bowed out to the front. This shows what we're proposing to do. This dash line here respects the current southerly wall and this would be the new southerly wall if we we're able to move it. This shows the present elevation. You can recall those piers from the photo that I had up previously. And this would be the new southerly ele elevation. So this would be the four season space and this would be the sunroom with all the glazing. Above it would be uh, area for seating on a deck. Again, if we're allowed to do this, the net reduction would be the building would go from 34.2% coverage to 33.9%. Fitzgerald's would not be creating any new nonconformity by converting the existing deck into habitable space dimensionally. Uh, you might remember we had about 60 feet to that side, and you know we're not really getting any closer than that. Uh, 243 of the zoning code says the board may allow an alteration, extension, or change to a pre-existing non-conforming structure where the alteration, extension, or change is not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing non-conforming structure. This proposal is simply a conversion of an existing deck, it's already impervious space, uh, to conditioned space and a three-season porch with a deck on top. This will have little to no impact on neighborhood views or vistas. It's not going to impact our neighbor to the north because it's all on, on the southerly wall of the house. To the west is a parking lot. There are a couple of bed and breakfast and inns out there. I think it serves those. Uh, to the northwest is a yard that serves a house a little bit further up. And, uh, you know, it's our hope and expectation that this is something that the board can support as something that really won't negatively affect the neighborhood views and the vistas. Uh, I submitted some bulk calculations last week. I hope the board found them helpful. The net effect is that once this four season space is added and once this you know, glass enclosed space is added, the house isn't getting any more, much more bigger than any other house in the neighborhood, uh, which is I know something that the board likes to consider. Um, you should also consider the special permit criteria in the 240, uh, 216. The site is adequate for the proposed alteration. It's suitable. There's no impact on traffic flow or safety. There'll be little to no impact on neighborhood views and vistas. Uh, it'll have adequate sewage disposal. I understand there was a concern uh, that Mr. McGann had identified um, as to the support for the sunroom and the proximity of the foundation and uh, sauna tubes. I do have an email from him uh, from Thursday, June 20th, say, uh, with, uh, in response to a foundation and sauna tube plan that was submitted uh, by Ms. Pacheco, saying three inches from the edge of the septic tank will work. Uh, just remember, most as built are the covers. Not sure if the three referring to uh, was to the tank itself or the cover. Uh, I believe that you know we'll find a way to make that work. Uh, but Scott seems to be in support, so I can submit it to him. So uh, I also should point out the site is served by adequate utilities. Um, we don't anticipate this build out having uh, a need for any upgrade and there'll be no effect on the supply of affordable housing. So in conclusion, I'd ask that the board conclude that this addition uh, and alteration to this house is really something that won't be substantially more detrimental than the existing structure. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to try and answer them. Okay, that's a pretty clear description okay. of the project. Uh, let's, uh, I forgot to, at the beginning of the hearing, designate a uh, voting member, I think, in consistent with our alternating policy. We'll make Mary voting on this one. Um, and so that's, uh, if you want to start, Mary, if you have any questions. Yeah. Um, what about the weight of the, this, the addition with regards to the septic? Uh, well, if it can't be designed in a way that will meet Title V, it's something that wouldn't be allowed. The board could certainly say that it's conditioned on the health agent being satisfied that there won't be any impact on the existing system unless it's altered in such a way that it could still handle the necessary flow based on the foundation and location of the piers. Sure. That, if you wish to speak, you have to come to the podium and state your name for the record. 
My name is Lisa Pacheco Rob. I'm the architect on the project. Um, Jeff uh, mistakenly said three inches. It's three feet from the septic system. So there's no, <laughs> there is no weight on the septic tank whatsoever. So but this is a full foundation, or is no? It's just sauna tubes. Sauna tubes. Yeah. Okay. So that was what was referenced in the referral, and if it's on sauna Correct. tubes, then yeah. okay. So it's good to have the architect come to the hearing. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. Um, that, okay. Jeff, th there's no um, there's no effects at all for flood zone at all with this project. Um, uh, it has to be built to flood zone standards. It's in a AV, I believe, uh, and so you know we've got to meet the standards in the flood zone. So is it going to be any different elevation on the height or no? Um, is it going to be the same height as the decking now, or is it going to have to be raised? Maybe the architect could chime in on that. <coughs> it, it does not. It doesn't have to change. <coughs> That's all I have. Uh, I don't have any questions. I think we just need to make mention of the uh, sauna tubes in the decision. In the decision. Uh, you time for public comment in a minute. Um, Jerry? Uh, I, I would concur with the sauna tube, but Ooh. also if Check with them during construction that this is a need to protect uh, the subsurface system. You know, heavy equipment going back. I don't know if it's H20 rated or not. So. Do we have a determination on whether it's H20? Okay. Probably not because it's not it's under a driveway or anything, right? Yeah. It's the cesspool that's not H20. Well, I, I'd let. Wh why would they build the H20 unless? It was under driveway. Th this was a very nice house. Yeah, and I know they listened to it, but I couldn't afford it. <laughs> 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 People had plenty of money when they built this. Uh, James is no, built the white. No questions. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't. I don't have any. I mean, the questions that I had have been addressed. So, <laughs> let's go to the public. Someone did have a question. If you'd like, ma'am, if you'd like, you please. Yes, you do. That's the price you have to pay to come here. Um, my name's Mary Ann Coyne, and we are to the north, directly to the north, okay? This house is huge, and it abuts my pro It's right on my property. In fact, it's on my property. Some of their landscaping, their fence is on my property. Um, that, and we're in a noisy, noisy area as it is, okay? Um, that roof deck, is that going to stay in the front of their house? It's not going to go around? So we can get an answer from the architect on that or from Jeff? That's going to stay in the front of uh, your house? It, it, it doesn't go around. Again, if you want to respond, we, we need you to <laughs> make your way to the podium. Sure. Uh, it's just on the one Everything side of the house. Everything through the board. It does not please. go around. Yeah, okay. Okay. Also, the, the driveway that they have, and they hardly ever use it. Uh, every construction vehicle that they have at that house, they're parking on the street. There's no parking on the street, on either side of the street, okay? So it's going to clog up the entire area. Now, I understand that people have the right to do construction, but they need to use their driveways. These are public ways, right? Right. They're public the ways. ways. There's no parking on either I side I of the street. I understand. I understand. And I'm remember just saying it's a police issue if, if they're parking there. Okay. But remember, we live next to a hotel. There's an inn at the end of the street. There's... We deal with the casino, the noise from the casino, and they're right on top of my property. And this is already a monster house. Okay. Okay. But they're they're really not increasing lot coverage in this. Okay. Space. All right, but it's outdoor space. It's, it's more outdoor space. It's more noise. Well, they. Are. That's fine. We it's good for us to hear your point of view. Um. Any other public comment? Okay. Uh, does the board feel they have a good grasp of this project? Yeah, I do. Someone I do. Yeah. Someone like to move to close? I'll move to close. Jerry, second? Second. Jerry, okay. Jerry and Bob to close. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, what's the pleasure of the board? A motion to approve. Second. <coughs> Findings and conditions. Okay, so. I 
we should specifically address the concerns of the abutter. I think you know, in, in terms of findings. So when findings, they. I just would make one point, which is as it currently exists, the porch is an outdoor space. And they're not really increasing the amount of outdoor space they can occupy. They're just moving it to the second floor. And there's a reduction of structure from 34.2 to 33.9. Mm -hmm. Means 240-3 and means 240-216. I think it is good to note that there's a um, 2.1 setback from Mass Ave. We should also put that Mass Ave is a very narrow street. I know there's been some questions about construction. So we could condition, I mean, construction or parking on site. They are. Yeah. They're not adding um, bedrooms. They'll be doing the addition on sauna tubes. And the sauna tube will be no closer than three feet from the septic system. Well, as the crew said, uh, also, you know, well, th this change. is a finding. Oh, okay. it's also, it's also, uh, I think we should also put that it currently does exist as a three story structure. They will be converting the um, current deck area to living space, but they will be adding a deck above. Okay, and you, is that it for findings? That's it for findings. In the Anyone else has any findings they want to add? Yeah. Okay. So conditions would be per plans. I think they'd have to uh, make sure that um, all construction vehicles are on site, not parked on the public way. Mm -hmm. Construction time, you know, if there's a dense. Yeah, so what do we usually use? We do 7 to 7. Seven seven seven. Seven. Seven to seven, Monday through Friday. Monday through Saturday, Friday. Six, seven, to noon, seven to noon. Would uh, would we want uh, any noon. different hours on Saturday? I just because like it's eight to beach. noon on Saturday. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Eight to noon on Saturday. Nothing on Sundays and holidays. The um, the and uh, sauna tube per the health department. Yeah, I think that should be mentioned as a condition yeah. as well. Yeah, it'd probably be a building permit condition. Construction does it doesn't have those boom type with subsurface disposal and also comply with construction vehicles as well and to comply with uh, engineering comments for stormwater mitigation. You know, maybe we should also add in findings that um, they did submit fault calculations. And they rate where do they rate? Well, they rate on the upper end of the bulk calculations, but uh, still within. within. You have to drive around the neighborhood to understand that this is. I know there's some big houses there. This, this is an eclectic neighborhood. Ma'am, ma'am, the hearing is closed. So they're going to be at um, 33.9. Mm -hmm. And there are some la larger structures there. There's one at 93.5, 66.8. 31.7. So they're on the upper end, but they're not the largest structure in the area. So I think that's the way to phrase it in the yeah, findings, you know, to be more specific. Okay. So we have findings and conditions. We're happy? Yep. Yep. That's the rest of the conditions. All right. Uh, all in favor? Mary, you're on this, right? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So it passes with those findings and conditions. We'll ask the construction vehicles be confined to the site. Uh, that takes us to 029-19 Swain, 26 Viper Lane. And my understanding is that they wish to continue. Is that correct, Bob? Yeah, so this hasn't been opened yet. So do we need to open this and then continue? I think you can just continue. So they have requested a continuation, so I guess we would vote to grant them a continuation. Okay. Would someone like to move to continue? So motion to continue, 29-19. Second. Okay, to what date? Who did it? 718 is what I've been told. Yep, so July 18th. Should we go note that there's been no testimony that the hearing hasn't been open? We're just, uh, we're just granting a continuance. We're actually not opening the this, yeah, this hearing. Right. I don't think you need to put that in there. Oh, no. thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Okay, that's a motion by Bob. Is there a second? Second. A second by Ed. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, that uh, takes us to the open meeting portion of the of the meeting. Uh, the first item. Oh, 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 oh. First item on it is the minutes. Oh, that's all right. We, uh, which I think will go very quickly. So, we have minutes of June sixth and June thirteenth. Uh, and people have reviewed those and are yes. prepared yes. to accept them. Yes. Uh, okay. It's a motion to accept the minutes of June 6th and June 13th, 2019. All in favor? Aye. Is there a second? Oh, I forgot about a second. Second it. Yeah. Then aye. Okay. Uh, none opposed. Unanimous. That takes us to discussion of the draft decision and possible vote on Locustville LLC uh, 006-19, that's a comprehensive permit. And we've all received a draft, uh, which includes a comprehensive procedural history. I don't think I need to go through that. Mm -hmm. Nope. Um, including letters, emails from our butters, information from the applicant or their representative, uh, referrals from town departments, plans submitted as I understand it, some of the plan dates on the plans are not uh, as current as they should be, is that correct, Noreen? Um, we're going to just verify and make sure that they're all updated. Okay. Um, so some of those plan dates may need to be changed in we could consider that, I suppose, if we want to move forward with the vote, uh, a Scribner's error. I will mention, for the benefit of the applicant, that there are only four voting members present, and none of the alternates are eligible to vote on this. So I guess the question is, beyond discussing it, would you want us to proceed with a vote? Thank you for asking. Um, we did review that with Noreen earlier, and we're, we're out of time essentially now. Um, I really would rather proceed tonight and uh, move forward with the vote. It looks like your next meeting is July 11th. You have a very heavy schedule that would require an extension of the um, 30 days to make a vote under the permit. So I'd like to move ahead with the four-member board. Okay. Um, Just a close discussion, right? No public input. Right. No public input. Good. <laughs> well, there's plenty of public. Oh, well, I know. <laughs> just to, someone always asks. So we should. So should we go condition by yeah, condition? Yes. Yeah, so yeah. so uh, yeah. So then we also have findings. I don't know if anyone wants to reference it, discuss any of the findings on the board. No, I think you should I go to page. I thought they were accurate when I reviewed them. Okay. I think we should, <coughs> should go start with page one. Okay. So, well, let's let's start with page nine. So the decision. Uh, which basically says, now therefore be it resolved that the Zoning Board of Appeals, uh, being the opinion aforesaid and acting under the provisions of Mass General Laws 40B, um, voted X to Y, however our vote goes, uh, following motion made by whomever uh, and seconded by whomever's uh, to approve or not to deny. Uh, so these are blanks left in there for us to consider. Uh, a comprehensive permit with conditions uh, under Mass General Laws 40B Section 20-230 and then to grant or not, I suppose, not grant the construction of 12 single family dwellings, three of which are affordable in perpetuity to households whose incomes are not more than 80% of the area median as determined by uh, Housing Urban Development and DHCD at 430 Locustville Road Hatchville, Mass, and then gives the assessor and parcel number. Um, to the extent permitted by law, preference for the sale of affordable units shall be given to first-time home buyers that are Falmouth residents, employees of the town or within the town, or who have children attending town schools. Comprehensive permits shall be subject to the following conditions. So the first is uh, where this comprehensive permit is made under Mass General Law 40B, Section 20. Um, dash 13. Noreen, there's a blank here. Is, is that re referencing additional sections? 
the override of local zoning density, there shall be no as of right changes to the subject property. Any changes requested shall be properly submitted to the Zoning Board of Appeals as provided under Mass General Law 40B. So that's the first condition we would be asked to vote on, but I'm not sure what that second. Can I, uh, I think it would just be, um, again, a grant. So if you're, if you're specifically okay, granting so this permit. Okay, so procedural question, saying. if I may. Yes. In the past, and this might be different, we usually vote to approve or disapprove. And in, in its entirety. And then the conditions will have to di dictate whether we're voting to approve or disapprove. So I think what Noreen is asking us to do, and I, I, don't, I think this is a perfectly fine way to approach it, is to look at each condition and vote to approve or not. And then we would and vote then go the back and then at the end. Just that's okay. the preference of the yeah. board. So okay. I guess what I, what I was thinking we would do is just quickly run, there's 47 of these. Yes. Mm. Um, run through them, and I don't have to read all of them in detail, but, uh, and maybe ask if the board has any concerns on any particular one. But for the benefit of the public, I think it's nice to state generally what each condition is, mm -hmm. okay? Um, so any issues, I mean, that's pretty standard, this item one is yeah. the housekeeping items. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, two, item two is construction shall be substantially as shown on the plans and submitted and reviewed by the board, and then there is a long list, uh, A through, <laughs> Double through double, double D, D. In uh, of uh, specific uh, reference to the to the plan. So, do any of those plan dates need update? Are those okay as is? Um, we're going to double check. We're going to double check. Yeah. We could say subject to Scrivener's error if that's appropriate. Just subject to confirmation of dates. For we'll just update subject them to confirmation to of dates. I like yeah. it. And item two. but it doesn't have to come back to us if the date Well, that changed. depends on whether you want to actually vote it tonight or, but that's a okay. th worth yeah. noting. Okay. okay, I tweaked it wrong, yeah. Uh, and then item three, which I believe everyone will be interested in. A six foot tall uh, wood stockade fence shall be installed along both the northerly and southerly lot line, side lines between the premises and 425 Locust Field Road and 440 Locust Field Road running from Locust Field Road to the Cape and Vineyard Electric Company easement. The fence may be stepped down at Locust Field Road to ensure that no sight distance is impeded. The fence shall be maintained in perpetuity by Zero Locust Field Road Homeowners Association. Uh, installation of the fence shall be completed prior to the issuance of a building permit for any residential dwelling. Does the board have any issues with that condition? No, that's good. Yeah. Okay. Um, item four, the applicant is directed to work with the town of Falmouth to determine if construction access can be achieved from Gifford Street for the duration of the construction process. Any issues with that? That's fine. Okay. Could we put the town of Falmouth and the uh, utility easement? Well, I think let's see if there's another. This is Town of Falmouth for the construction access because I think they own the property at Gifford Street. But mm -hmm. they have still need an easement to go over the. But this one's just for the Gifford Street. Yeah. Well, if we cover it later, then. Yeah. Right. Okay, item five. The applicant has uh, stated that the roadway will be designated to, to meet town standards with the possibility of the town accepting the road in the future. Falmouth Engineering requires installation of appropriate drainage measures during construction. The road shall be installed and inspected according to Falmouth Subdivision Road Protocol for Article 7, uh, Section 305, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, and 42. Required inspections shall be scheduled directly with Falmouth Engineering. Um, and then the town would be obliged to maintain any waterway under the road. As such, town necessarily seeks to have the uh, water line installed to town standard. Again, can we ask not to have uh, side discussions? If you if you want to talk, that's fine, but just yeah, leave the room. Um, uh, 
the applicant shall. Yeah, applicant shall also work cooperatively with the town to secure approval uh, from Eversource. So here's where you go, uh, Jerry, to extend a water line, water main, uh, to effect a looping of the water main through the easement to Gifford Street for a liability pressure and flow. Uh, the extension of the water main shall be installed by the applicant to the Wesley lot line at the town-owned land uh, prior to commencement of phase two of development if an approval to extend through the easement is secured within nine months from the uh, expiration date of the 20-day appeal period for the comprehensive permit with no appeal filed uh, or if an appeal is filed the resolution of that appeal and then the town shall connect to the water main continue the water line westerly put, uh, from the westerly property line uh, to the town main on Gifford Street at its cost and expense. Again, this this one I read, remember, does not cover the construction road. Maybe you could say they can't do, I think they could do this without a construction road, but I think to the, certainly we should add similar language uh, to make sure that, you know, is it, it's conditioned on the easement right away, as well as the town right away. So For the construction road, two different things. So you're talking about the access from Gifford, right? Yeah, but is, during is that not? I thought it was covered elsewhere. Is that not covered in four? No, that's just the water. Four is four is the is just the access on the portion that they own on Gifford Street. This one has to do with the easement and bring it through the easement. And the other thing is they only got to maintain the water main underneath the road. The road goes away. I think they have to maintain the entire water main throughout. Who's they? The town. So there's not going to be a road there after construction is done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so right, so right now you, you did miss one sentence too. It says the applicant shall install the water main as shown on the project plans prior to occupancy permit for the project. Okay. Which is third line down. But, okay. How do they maintain that under a road that doesn't exist after this is built? It's vacant land again. I, I'm just trying to. This is vacant town-owned land. So the so the town. So the easement section is actually owned by this parcel. Is there just an easement on it? So they own the land, but there's an easement running on the land. So who maintains it? So they would own. Until the town accepted anything, they, it would be their responsibility. The only thing we'd have to do with the easement is the permission to put the water line under the easement. So Noreen wrote this. Is that your, what you're contemplating? So this would be the, uh, the uh, Locust Field LLC or the Homeowners Association would be responsible. So the water main will be the town's responsibility. So because they have asked to have it looped, et cetera, the extension that would go through the easement, should there be a problem, will be maintained by the town. I think we should specifically make sure that's clear, that the entire water main and extension will be maintained by the town. The entire water main, including yeah. the portion yeah. under the easement, uh, or whatever you, through uh, the easement. Uh, what about under the main, the roadway, locust? The well, I said the entire water. Yeah. I mean, you can whisper, but I think the entire. All right, so the point is you'd like some revised wording. It's clearer. I think we could hammer it out now. Why am I? We could try, but I think I've, I've not been. Okay. I mean, Laura's telling us so we're, they're out of time, so. So what this looks like is that the applicant would have to install the water main under their own road. Correct. The rest of it is subject to being able to get a granting of the easement. I think that's the issue. If they get the granting of the easement, then the town would be responsible for the connection. Correct. Yeah. But not the if I, they don't, I, in order to move forward, I, they might have to come back later for an amendment to who maintains it, because there's no road afterwards. But there is an easement. That's what I was suggesting. That's what I was trying to get to. Though. Okay. So where are we here? Any water line, first mm -hmm. sentence. There we go. Okay. Okay, that's clear. Any water line. Yeah. 
maybe so installed or something like that. Oh, you're good to go. Because any water line could be a lot of water line. Um, okay. So how did so how did we change that sentence now? We just we struck on. How do you guys like the town would be obliged to maintain any water line installed for this project? Installed for this project. Yeah. So devil's advocate if you write it that way does that mean they're responsible for any water line that goes on private property on each lot no that's private always the connection is always private but you're saying but the way you just change it it says any water line it should be any water main line. yeah any water main yeah. there we go <coughs> so the final sentence would be the town would be obliged to maintain any water main installed for this project all right I, item six uh, board's votes, yeah, let's see, water line construction shall be in accordance with the town's water department. Water department fees requirements shall be the responsibility of the developer. Prior to the issuance of building permits, the applicant uh, shall conduct hydrant flow test. Uh, okay, I think that's. That seems fine. Yeah. Uh, maximum height of the dwellings shall be 24 feet. This is item seven. Everyone good with that? Good. Yep. I assume that's according to plan. Construction hours shall be limited to 7 a.m. and uh, 7 p.m. Monday through Friday. Saturday hours shall be limited 8 to 4 p.m. No Sunday or holiday hours, absent an emergency. All construction vehicles remain on subject property. Um, you know, no idling. Efforts undertaken to minimize impact on abutters, securing dumpsters, stabilizing soil, uh, trees straddling the property line shall be assumed to be jointly owned and cannot be damaged without prior written approval of both parties. Okay, that's all item eight. I have a question. We just made concern about Saturday being 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. We have 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. here. Well, I think we did it wrong. Intentionally? Fine. It's a lot bigger. I, I think we did. Yeah, because okay. it's yeah. unaffordable. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, applicants shall con item nine. Uh, applicants shall contact the town's police department to discuss coordination of traffic during construction. Um, and you know, there needs to be a contact person who's available by phone. Uh, that's item nine. Okay, that's fine. Um, item 10, development should be limited to a maximum of 12 single-family detached dwellings with a maximum of 36 bedrooms. Three of the dwellings shall remain in perpetuity affordable to eligible purchasers whose annual income uh, meets the requirements as we've discussed. Uh, and these three uh, dwellings shall be eligible for inclusion in the town's subsidized housing inventory. Okay, good. Uh, Okay, to that. Um, so each each time you guys say okay, we're assuming that that's all in favor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. If, if anyone's hoping, not in, hoping. if anyone's well, we can make not a in comprehensive condition waiver. Okay. Right. I'm just saying, if you're not in favor, you got to say something. I'm sure we'll let you know. Because <laughs> Noreen's taking this all down. No, we still need a first and a second somehow. Yeah. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll get to the end. Uh, there shall be no further division or subdivision of the premises. That's item 11. Okay. Uh, some redundancy here. The three, the three affordables uh, will be included in the subsidized housing inventory. No Certification for compliance is required. Um, and Falmouth's affordable housing designee. This certification shall include documentation, affordable. So this is basically about monitoring, I'm assuming. Yeah, that's um, fine. Good. Item 13 uh, specifies which units, which lots are affordable, and they are 2, 5, and 10. We agreed on that. And one affordable unit must be completed <coughs> for each three market rate units that are completed. Mm -hmm. uh, certificate of occupancy for the final market rate unit may not be issued until the affordable units have been completed and granted certification of occupancy. All 
the dwellings to have the same exterior appearance and construction quality. Yep. That's item 13. Good, good. Uh, item 14, one unit shall be constructed to be handicap accessible. Good. Uh, item 15, dwelling on lot seven shall be relocated so that the septic is placed outside of the DEP zone C of contribution. Good? Good. 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 Uh, certified plot plan including building, this is item 16, um, condition 16, including uh, building and lot dimensions for each structure shall be, shall match architectural plans. Good. Uh, and get a sign off. Yep. Uh, final as built shall be provided, that's item 17. Yep. Yep. Uh, applicants shall provide a bus shelter, bus stop shelter at the at Locust Hill Road. Good, good. Okay. Applicants shall provide sidewalk along the southerly side of the roadway. Very good. Uh, landscaping shall be installed as presented with all plant materials, maintaining good health. Any diseased plants will be removed or replaced. Mature trees should be maintained. We're good with that. Good. good. Um, there is a landscape plan, a preliminary landscape plan of some sort. Do we want to reference that in here? I think it's listed in the list of plans. Yes, we do. Do we want to say it's installed in under supervision? I'm just saying in accordance with the landscape plan under item 20. In the past, we had concerns about a registered landscape architect. Th that's thing. mentioned somewhere. Hmm. Well, you can tell me where. It's just to be consistent. That so on item 20, you want to change as presented to the actual plan? I don't think that their landscape was so extensive that mm -hmm. you really need to have a landscape architect to go around and ensure that they, but it's up to you. No, that's, that's a good point. It's more residential, so. Yeah. 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 On page 10, it says typical landscape plan 0110. Right. Yeah. Okay. So it covers. Yeah, well, that can leave a lot of leeway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but these are residential. Yeah. Preliminary, right? This is a. These are always preliminary at this point. Lighting shall be provided at the roadway entrance as well as light poles at the driveways and front doors. Any further lighting is required by building code and legal code, but must be dark sky compliant. Spotlights are prohibited. Good. Uh, uh, there's any one, lighting? Sorry, there's one tweak to that, which is okay. that I may have. Uh, inadvertently added lighting at the entrance to the roadway where they may have just represented that they would be at the individual houses. Lighting shall be provided at the entrance to the road. So you're saying you're added that? Yeah, so I don't we know if, if that's something you want or. Is it something I you always want? feel I <laughs> that it's not a bad idea. Good. You got 12 houses there. You really need to know okay. when to turn right or hmm. left. Okay. I think the key issue that I recall from all the about it comments was they didn't want lighting in the back. Yeah. And there was safety concerns to that. Mm. So, so that does yeah. say spotlights prohibited, any lighting installed to the side or rear, uh, as may be required to meet code, shall be dark sky compliant and shall not shed light off the subject lot. So there is a condition at least yeah. in name dealing with that. I have a question. Does yep. not shed light, is that any different from not being able to see it. What does shed light mean? So it wouldn't it wouldn't uh, fall upon adjacent properties. Yeah. <coughs> if that's the consensus of the board. Yeah. I believe that was the consensus. And because it's dark sky. So be there no shadows then? Well, the light won't spill over to the properties, but because it's dark sky compliant, you won't have to worry about bright lights anyways. Mm. Okay. It's not right. dark Thank you. So this just keeps someone from putting yep. a big Blood light, so Blood light in the mm -hmm. back, right. Uh, at least if they follow as written. Item 22, construction shall be in accordance with requirements of town engineering. Uh, and storm water managed on site. Um, engineering shall be requested to inspect uh, work underway. Uh, and e engineering shall recommend refunding of a bond upon completion. So there's the bond. With approved plans. Yep. Okay. Fine. Okay. Uh, dry wells shall be added to the plans, including installation plans for a two foot diameter, two foot deep dry well installed 
Within the two foot envelope of crushed stones, connect the roof leaders. Okay, this is basically just. Uh, yeah, here's the other one. Roof and runoff? Yeah. No. Hmm? I went to 24. Here's 23. Here 23, I know. I'm okay. Are we good with 23? 23 is good. Okay, 24. Applicants shall cooperate with the town to gaze, gain easements through Cape and Vineyard Electric. Uh, easements to provide looped water mains. Does this have a nine month contingent? Hmm? Does this have a nine month contingent? I'm not sure why this is in there, Noreen, because doesn't we deal with it earlier? We did. We can, can, we, we can, can we strike this? Yep. Okay. okay. So if we do strike this, just be aware we have to renumber everything. That's all right. Yeah, well, that's all right. So 25 now becomes 24. Uh, applicants shall cooperate with the town for a curb cut to create temporary access um, through Eversource easement in order to provide for construction access. Again, it's, I don't know if we sort of dealt with, with this already. No, this is where it is. I'd like the access road provide for construction access. No, there was, was there was a section that referenced. But this uh, is a curb cut too, which is a right. But I'm just wondering if we can't move that curb we, cut we language. Could, we could add that to four. Let's put it up in four. Okay. Applicant is directed to work with the town to determine if construction access can be achieved. That's where to put it. So, uh, twenty-six now. Is twenty-four. Current twenty-six. Twenty. So if we moved, if, Hold on. if we move, what is currently I'll number 25, them. I'm just <laughs> saying, we'll take that four. curb cut language right. and we'll throw it in there in four yes. and yes. consolidate yes. it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Move to four. Twenty-six. Current. So I'm going to use the existing <laughs> numbers. Good. I'm assuming Good. Noreen can renumber, renumber and count. Um, the town is specifically not waiving fees associated with construction, <coughs> including, uh, but not limited to the water line, water tapping sleeve, valve, me water meters, and, and so forth. Um, we're good with that. Good. 27, any waiver not specifically granted herein is denied. That's the sort of the standard 40B condition. Okay. Uh, waiver from subdivision regulation, specifically 305-24A, grade at the intersection, 305-24D, dead end street. Uh, that's, I presume, length of dead end street. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I, I would like it if it said length. Um, 305-34, street length. Again, I wonder if we could say requirement four. Uh, Three hundred five dash forty trees planted on both sides of the right of way at a maximum of forty foot interval. Do we want to? I know we're granting the waiver here, but say per provided plan. Well, these are the specific waivers they've asked for out of the application. Well, this is just mm -hmm. referencing the zoning. Okay. The regulation. Right. Okay. The regulatory so requirements. So you want to keep it separate. That's or actually the subdivision requirements. Okay. Hmm. Um, so those are the subdivision uh, waivers that are being requested. Is everyone okay with granting them? Yes. yes. Good. Okay. Uh, 29, waiver from the requirement for a minimum 45,000 square foot lot in agricultural A. Yes. 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 Okay. Waiver from requirement for a minimum 80,000 square foot lot in a water resource protection zoning district. Yes. You know, there's quite a bit of discussion yes. about this. Uh, waiver from requirement uh, for a minimum lot width of 150 feet in the agricultural A zoning district. Yes. yes. And I think it should be said that, you know, much as we might want all of these regulations to apply if we, uh, you know, we will be overturned if we do not provide yes. mm -hmm. uh, for this. Um, the waiver from requirement minimum lot width of 200 feet in a water resource district. 
Yes, sir. Okay. Waiver from a requirement of minimum lot frontage of 100 feet. Okay. Yes. Uh, waiver from a requirement for a minimum lot frontage of 150 feet in a water resource. Yeah, didn't we already say that? Well, that's an Ag A. Okay. Waiver from requirement for a minimum uh, front yard setback of 25 feet for all lots except lot four. Yes. Okay, we're up to 36, we're getting. <coughs> Waiver from uh, requirement for lot coverage exceeding 20%. Uh, for Ag di A districts for lots 2, 3, 5, 11, and 12, and Water Resource Protection District uh, for lots 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, Just 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yes. Yep. Uh, any deviation, no matter how minor, from plan submitted and approved shall be submitted to the board for approval prior to implementation of said change. Prior to implementation of said change, important point. Um, zoning uh, administrator may make a determination as to whether these changes are minor in nature and can be approved administratively or whether they will require a hearing for an amendment. Um, all changes shall be requested in advance as opposed to after the fact. I don't know if we need to say that twice. We've said prior. Said it once before in other jobs and it didn't yeah. work. Yeah, but saying it, <laughs> saying it multiple times I'll doesn't make it, it happen, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, <coughs> I'd, I'd favor striking that sentence. But What's that? Because so yeah. I think it says prior. Yep. Yeah. Approval prior to implementation of said change. We don't yeah. need to also say no, all fine. changes shall be requested in advance. Okay. You know, I just so eliminate so prior to. No, eliminate all changes shall be requested in advance as opposed to after the fact. It's clear when okay. they say prior. That's fine. Changes made prior to an approval may be subject to full hearing. There are risks that the ZBA may deny the request. Okay, item 30, you're good with item 37? Yes. Yep. Applicant is required to provide regulatory agreement and declaration of restricted mm -hmm. covenants for ownership support and affordable house deed rider specifying affordable units shall remain affordable in perpetuity. And uh, these are numbered, so I don't know if you, applicant uh, is required to provide free declaration of trust for the homeowners association. These collective documents should be provided to the Zoning Board of Appeals for approval by town council prior to issuance of any building permit and subsequently recorded at the registry of deeds. Applicant has a limited the applicant as a limited dividend organization is limited to profits under 40B. Um, here my only recommendation is since we're numbering them one, two, three, I don't know if we need to make a second sentence that starts with uh, the app. Basically this is the second sentence that goes the applicant is required to provide a declaration. I think you can just say one, two, three. So I just strike the applicant is required to provide a second time. Anyone object to that change? No. No. Okay. Thirty-nine. Final lottery. Uh, final lottery agent lottery plan and marketing plan shall be submitted prior to issuance <coughs> certificate of occupancy. David Gabbard. Yes. <coughs> Uh, prior to the issuance of certificate of occupancy, the applicant shall enter into a monitoring agreement to be approved by <coughs> town council. All costs borne by the applicant until sale of the last portable unit. Uh, thereafter, the sellers of the affordable units, I guess fair cost, a uh, copy of all financial information by the monitoring agent shall be provided to the Zoning Board of Appeals after an initial round of sales. Good with that? Yes. Good. Comprehensive permit shall be a master permit which shall subsume all local permits approvals normally issued by local boards other than specifically enumerated and uh, as a condition, in a condition. What's the difference between that and the previous one? Uh, then 40 and 41? 
41 and 42. The one's a master for me. Okay. Good point. I think this is just saying VBA is, is, is the permitting authority. Within the Am I correct? Within the yeah. right. Um, yeah, local boards shall issue necessary permits and approval upon assurance that they are consistent with this comprehensive permit and applicable state. So are local boards issuing any other permits? I don't know the if Board that Health needs to and be the there. Conservation Commission okay. listed at the bottom. Are excluded from that provision. Uh, this is confusing as written to me. So this sounds like local boards issue necessary permits and approvals upon assurance they are consistent with the comprehensive permit and applicable federal and state law. The Board of Health and Conservation Commission are excluded from this provision. In other words, they think they are. They don't uh, issue permits. I think they are the two boards that do issue permits. Correct, but hmm. they are not covered under the comprehensive permit that you issue. So wait a minute. Now, can yeah, but the way it's written, I don't think okay. that's what it says. Okay. Well, you can't take but can they require advanced nitrogen? I don't think they can. Hmm. I can't think of well, they but could if it was defined as a nitrogen sensitive area under Title V. But it's not. Right. But I'm just saying, so I, I say get they can. They could. They could. In theory. I don't know why we have to say the Board of Health are excluded. Well, they I think do. it just shows that those are the only two boards that are excluded. I, I, I want to delete the sentence be prior to that. Local boards shall issue necessary approvals and permits. Uh, that, because we just said that this is the master, per, you know, this is a master permit, right? right. The Board of Health and Conservation Commission are the only two boards that aren't that can supersede because of they their I state regulations that they can rep they are so we could just eliminate that second sentence. Does that make sense, Noreen? Yeah. So how will it read now? It will read: the comprehensive permit shall be a master permit which shall subsume all local permits and approvals normally issued by local boards other than as specifically enumerated in a condition. Oh, okay, I see, good. I don't know that there is so any specific enumeration in any condition. I guess we have the Title V. Well, wait, the second, the last sentence then is the Board of Health and Conservation Commission are excluded from this provision. But they can change, I, they could, but for the pur purposes of this, they have no authority uh, that we know of to make this nitrogen it, sensitive. Nothing is specific. So, I mean, it's, that's not, well, we supersede them in this, period. Well, I think we have a Board of Health uh, referral where they recognize that this is a 40B and that they've stated that they're not requiring an IA system. Then this is not uh, needed. Uh, uh, I'm saying this is not, it's redundant. They've said it, we've referenced it. Well, we could open up a can of worms on this, and I don't think we intend to. It might have been boilerplate language, but I think in this case, since many people, even some people on the board, would have liked this to have advanced nitrogen. That's not a requirement, period. The Board of Health has already weighed in. Right, well, there. Well, what else? You can't you? retroactively uh, require it. Then, once why, the decision is made. then why is this here? It just for historical purposes? Right. So it's separate for, from us. For, for health. Oh, for, okay. For <laughs> that I understand. Okay. All right. And similarly, if there's any wetlands issues, which I don't think there okay, are. Okay, they have to issue the permit, the conditions of the permit. So the applicant's fine, so we're fine. Mm. Yeah. Okay, no, no. so we just delete that sentence prior to that. Thank you for the education. Okay. <coughs> Item 42. Comprehensive permit shall not be transferred without express approval of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Yes. Uh, 43, each condition in the decision shall run with the land. Okay. Uh, we're good with that? Yes. Uh, good. Prior to starting work under the comprehensive permit, applicant, this is item 44, uh, and general contractor shall hold pre-construction meeting with the building commissioner, town engineer, 
and Department of Public Works to review requirements and ensure compliance with this decision. Yes, please. Because this is preliminary at the fifth line. Yep. Uh, the permit shall not take effect until a copy of the decision bearing the certification from the town be, clerk. Can't be breached. Yep. Uh, the 20 days, is, so this is basically wait for the appeal period. Okay. Um, item 46, permit shall lapse three years from the date which, can be breached. which the decision was filed with the town clerk's office. And the last item, the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals reserves the right to recall the applicant with such notice as the board deems proper to discuss any unresolved matters. Uh, okay, so I guess, Noreen, you can take it that all those with modifications we've mentioned are approved. Do we want to, for the sake of clarity, make sure we all understand the modifications? I know it's tedious, but if we're going to vote to approve, uh, if the board... So there was just some minor wording changes. Yeah. Are we ex I mean, if they go quickly. Well, if you're happy, I'm happy. The other yeah. wordsmith. Sorry, was, it, was there anything specific that you? We, we struck a, we struck 24. Yeah. We moved 25 to consolidate it with item four. Yeah, right. uh, we made a few minor wording changes in terms of the waivers to clarify specifically okay. what was required. So, for example, length of dead end street. No, I have. What about the sentence you eliminated? Yeah, yep, yep, that's item 41. Okay, I just want to read, read it one more time for you. No, if okay. you're happy, I'm happy. Well, I want you to be very happy. <laughs> the first time in a long time. The comprehensive <laughs> permit shall be a master permit, which shall subsume all local permits and approvals normally issued by local boards. That's our okay. charge under Chapter 40B, other than specifically enumerated in a condition. No. So I don't think, I actually think we could strike that last part of the sentence because I don't think there are any conditions that enumerate responsibilities for other boards. So we'll move <coughs> and then the only, then the last part of that is the Board of Health and Conservation Commission <coughs> are excluded from this provision and that's because they have requirements under state law. Okay, so I'll make a motion we approve. Ho hold on, hold on. Well, you already covered the things I was going to say. All right. <coughs> So the last bit of this is the Board of Appeals by signature below certifies vote of the board as follows for the above referenced hearing. And, and that's vote so many for and so many against. Now we've basically given Noreen uh, our view on each of these. So okay. now, Jerry, if you'd like to go I'd ahead. I'd like to make a motion that we approve all the conditions as annotated tonight. Second. So approve the application with conditions. Well, and yes, thank you. Yeah. Approve the overall application. With the annotated conditions. Okay, so uh, if any further discussion on that motion. No, just note in the record that there's a unanimous vote on all the conditions. Okay. So uh, now we have to take a vote. Right. Yeah. So there's four of us, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah, well I do need to say thank you. Second it. Ed always seconds. <laughs> Bob Ross, I do this. Okay, and I, I will vote in favor as well. So now we have to approve it. We just did. That was it. That was it. <coughs> okay, that was voting on the conditions. Yeah, I think that was everything. Yeah. Okay. I thought you needed a second motion to approve it. But not as okay. As, as we went through, we gave Noreen our opinion yeah. on each okay. decision. Okay, right. I'm just this confused. Okay, good. Um, so that concludes the locust field plan mm. item, correct? Yes, sir. Yep. Okay. Give everyone a minute or two to clear. Hmm? 
We do have more business to conduct, so if, if you want to talk, I would ask that you. Okay. Board updates? Any board updates? No, just that uh, Mary and I both get reappointed on Monday by the select board. Mary's going to get reappointed too? She yeah. did because her appointment was only good for 30 days. Yeah. <laughs> but she did such a good job in that 30 days, they yeah. reappointed her. They reappointed her. There you go. Did you take a new oath, oath of office? Not yet. The letter, we're going to read from the letter. Read the letter. Oh, so we're still right. legal yeah. until July. Oh, okay. That's the correct. Okay. They did not vote in all the other boards. So okay. Uh, discuss date for future workshop. Maybe we should wait for TJ to do that. Huh? Yeah. Yes. And circulate a date. Um, so everybody send maybe possible dates for Saturday. Okay. Uh, board discussion, zoning recodification. Has there been any more mo movement on recodification? No, our next meeting is uh, middle of July. Of July, okay. And any future agenda items? Hmm? Hearing none, uh, I think we can adjourn. Move. Meeting adjourned. Yeah. This is my business.